Hello, and may the Lord be with you. Welcome to online worship at First Presbyterian Church of Joliet. We are so glad that you have decided to join us. Before we get into the worship portion today, I just want to make a quick announcement about our midweek programming. Um, we will be beginning this Wednesday from 5.30 to I think 7.30, with our midweek. This, this is a great opportunity to come and get fed in every way possible. We will provide a meal. We will provide age-appropriate Bible studies for both children and adults. The children will be able to go and, and get some hands-on experience with all different kinds of music, not just singing, but the instruments as well. And um, we adults also can spend some time just getting to know one another. That's that's one of the disadvantages, disadvantages, I think, to online worship is sometimes we can become disconnected. But we know that the culture has changed, our life has changed, and we can't always gather together on a Sunday morning. So if you happen to have Wednesday evenings free for a couple of hours, come and just be together with your fellow believers in Jesus. Come and be fed physically and spiritually. If you have any questions about the midweek, you can go to our church website or please call the church office or any of the pastors and we will be happy to give you more information. Now, let's clear our minds of any clutter that we've brought into this time. Let's remember that, that when we worship God, when we set aside time to worship God, it is holy time. It's time set apart from all the other parts of our lives. God is with us always, but the reality is we can't spend every moment focusing just on him. So I invite you, as you are called into worship, to focus your whole self on holy, holy God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for meeting us here as we worship together, but apart online. We pray that our worship will be pleasing to you. We ask that you will teach us something during this time, that as our time of worship ends, that we will have learned something new about our relationship with Jesus Christ, something new about what we learn in the scriptures, or, or maybe, Lord, just give us some questions to explore as the week goes on. Thank you, Father, for loving us. Help us to love you and one another very, very well. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
any kids watching, I invite you to come a little closer to the screen. I want to spend a little bit of time with you today. You know, as I was thinking about what we would talk about, I realized it's been a while since we've read a Bible story together. And you know how much I love reading the Bible, and you know how important I think it is for us to read it regularly. So I pulled out the Beginner's Bible. I want to read you a story about a man named Paul. Now, this story comes from the book of Acts, um, actually from chapter 9, verses 20 through 43. But I'm going to read you a little bit about some of the things that Paul did. So listen to what God's word says for you today. It's called Paul's Journeys. Paul traveled far and wide. He taught everyone he met about Jesus. The new believers were called Christians because they were followers of Jesus Christ. Paul traveled with different helpers. He shared good news, the good news with everyone he met. He baptized many people. During Paul's travels, he started many churches. Sometimes he would walk for miles and miles. Other times he would take a boat across the seas. He told everyone about Jesus' love for them. That's the end of the part of the story that I wanted to read to you today. So Paul met Jesus and he learned about Jesus and he wanted to share Jesus with everyone. Most importantly, he wanted to share with them how much Jesus loves them. He taught them. So I was thinking about this, how, how God wants us to love one another and teach one another. So I pulled out my grandson's toy basket. This is the toy basket that he keeps here at my house. Now he's only five and a half months old. He's still very little. And so the toys that his mama has for him to play are, um, they're like sensory development toys. They teach him about the world around him. For example, this is one of his favorites, this cute, this cute little rattle. It has little beads in the middle and he sticks his little fingers in the holes and he learns how to move his hands. And another little toy, a little book that she has for him is See, Touch, and Feel. So he can learn how different things feel when he touches them with his little hands. And it's really important that babies start to learn things like this. But you know, the other thing that he's learning while his mama plays with him is that his mama loves him, that he can trust his mama, that she looks out for him. And as she teaches him that she loves him and he grows older, he will come to love other people as well. And then his mama will move from just sensory development toys to teaching him about other things in the world, about how we are called to treat other people, about Jesus and how much Jesus loves his people, about how we share Jesus with others. And you know, the wonderful thing about that and the wonderful thing about the story we read about Paul is that we never have to stop doing those things. We get to share Jesus with other people. We get to love other people for our whole lives. All the time, we just get to love people. And that's something that we need to remember maybe when we're mad at our friends or at our brother or sister or even our parents, that being mad is a feeling and it's okay to have a feeling. But even while we're feeling mad, we can still love the people that we're mad at because Jesus loves us. So when we get those really big feelings, like my grandson right now, he's starting to learn to get really angry if, if he's trying to, to move this rattle a certain way or it gets stuck on his finger, he gets really mad and he yells. And it's okay that he gets really mad and he yells. But his mama comes and she fixes the rattle for him and she calms him down. She helps him learn how to feel his feelings. And that's what we can do for each other. That's what the adults in your life can do for you. They can teach you how to, how to feel your feelings and still, and still be a loving person. 
the adults that you trust in your life are safe places where you can go and you can ask questions and you can share things that scare you or that you wonder about. Just like Paul spent his whole life teaching people, our moms and dads spend their whole life teaching us. My mom is still teaching me. And as you grow older, you'll teach your younger brothers and sisters and your friends. And someday when you're grown ups, you may have the opportunity to teach your own children. It's one of my most favorite things about being a Christian is the basic rules are that we love God and that we love people. And we get to keep learning how to do that better. So that is our time together for today. My friends, Jesus loves you so very, very much. You are special and you are, are someone that, that God made and created. And that's a glorious thing. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Bible, for what we learn there. Thank you that you've given us the gift and abilities to teach one another, to share your love with one another, so that as we grow and as we get older, we can love you more and love other people better. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of children here at this church, for the gift of children everywhere. Please, Lord, make us adults into good mentors, into wise teachers, so that we can guide these children that you love on the path with Jesus. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye.
Please pray with me. Holy Spirit, pour upon us wisdom and understanding that being taught by you in Holy Scripture, our hearts and minds may be open to receive all that leads to, to life and holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 and 10. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Proverbs 27 verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Romans 15 verse 14. I myself am convinced, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. When we say that we are Christians, what we mean is that we believe in Jesus Christ. We follow Jesus Christ. We believe that he was born onto this earth as a baby, that he grew up, that he taught far and wide, teaching in parables and teaching directly and explaining what it means to be a person of faith. We believe that he died on the cross for our sins. And we believe that he rose again. And because of this, we have salvation. We, we will spend all of eternity with Jesus. That's what it means to be a Christian when we're in relationship with Jesus. And of course, when we're in relationship with others, we learn to cultivate that relationship. In the context of our marriage, we learn to, to do kind things for our spouses. We divide the household chores. When we make a new friend, we put an effort in building that friendship. When we have long term friends. We put effort into maintaining those friendships. We learn what we need to do to keep those things strong. And the same is true of our Christian walk, of our relationship with Jesus. Scripture gives us practices that will help us become stronger believers, that will grow our faith, that will bring us closer to Jesus. One of those practices is prayer. We are called as people of faith to pray often in our private lives, in our private homes. And we are also called to corporate prayer. That's what it is when we pray all together. It's a corporate, it's a group prayer. And so now my friends, I invite you into a time of corporate prayer. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, as the seasons change, as we move from summer into fall, we are awed by, by the intricacy of this earth that you have created. As we watch our children grow, we are amazed. We are amazed at how you created your people to learn and to grow and to change. As, as we become adults and we continue to learn and grow, our awe is just intensified of, of the detail that you put into our lives and that you have chosen to be in relationship with us in our lives. We confess, Father, that, that we don't always live up to the calling that you have given to us. We are sorry for those times that we have sinned, that we have not paid attention, that we have done something that we know does not delight your heart. But we also know through scripture that because of Jesus, we are forgiven. We are forgiven through your grace and your mercy. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have given to us, for this church that you have planted in Joliet. Father, we ask that we would hear your promptings, that we continue to grow toward the church that you're calling us to be, that, that when people hear about First Press in Joliet, that, that, they, that they are called there, that they know that it's a place where they can come and be safe and be helped. I thank you for all the many people who participate in the ministries at First Press in Joliet. I thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we have in our individual lives, for the joys and celebrations that we have. And we know, Lord, that when we celebrate, you celebrate with us. 
That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for being with us in our joys, no matter how big or how small they may be. And Father, of course, we know that you are with us in our sorrows as well. We lift to you people we know that need prayer. We lift all who are on our church prayer list. We lift this church to you, Lord. Build us, strengthen us, give us peace. We pray, God, for, for this world, for the things that we cannot control. We trust, Lord, that, that you are present in the things that we don't understand. And, and we choose to just leave those things in your hands, even when we don't understand. We ask, Lord, that you be with all who are ill, whether in body, mind, or spirit, that you be with those who are passing from this earth, and that you be with those who have lost a loved one. Father, you are good and you are holy. You are worthy of our trust. Thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us other Christians to walk this life with. Please, Lord, mold us, change us, and help us to be loving toward our neighbors. We pray all of this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Another practice that scripture teaches us about is, is generosity. It's giving with an open hand, whether that be giving of our time, of our love, of our knowledge, of our money. And part of the reason that First Press and Joliet is able to help people in our community and continue to grow disciples of Jesus is through the financial offerings of people who love Jesus. So I invite you now to think about your gifts to First Press. There are a variety of ways that you can give. If you are in worship on a Sunday morning, we still pass the plate the old fashioned way. You can put your offering right into the offering plate. You can mail in your offerings. You may notice that in the monthly mailings, there are two envelopes. Those envelopes are for your use if you choose to mail in an offering. And there are quite a few electronic means of giving to the church. And so if that interests you, um, please take a look at the website to learn more about it. Friends, we are growing together. We are following Jesus together. We are doing our best to help people around us together. Every little part we each can do makes a difference for God's kingdom. Thank you for your part. Peace be with you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear now to His temple draw near, join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who o'er all things so wondrously reigneth. Shelters thee under his wings, yea, so gently sustaineth. 
hast thou not seen? All thy desires there have been Granted in what he ordained Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore That hath life and breath come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from his people again. Gladly forever, forever and ever adore. Uh, today I 
am uh, preaching on, um, in a way of a continuation of Pastor Roy's sermon from last week. Um, Pastor Roy, if you remember, uh, spoke about uh, the greatest commandment, love God and love your neighbor. And more specifically today, I want to look at a very practical way of how to love those that God has put in your life. With that being said, I'll invite you to pray with me. Lord God, may your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, the reading I chose for today comes from the second letter to, uh, to uh, Timothy from Paul. And it's the first uh, 14 verses. Listen now with words, with years of faith. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I am reminding I, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is, is, that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel in the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace. And this grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. But he has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality, immoral immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appoint, appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard that deposit I entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching, that you have that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus guard the good deposit entrusted to you with the help of the holy spirit living in us this is the word of the lord for god's people how many of us here enjoy a good bonfire especially in the fall and when the weather is a little bit chilly. I want to share a personal story with you about learning how to make fire. I love to barbecue in the summer time. A few years back, I was getting ready for a cookout. And for some reasons, I could not get the fire going the way I liked it. I had the charcoal all nice and tidy set up on, on the Weber and um, I had paper and lightning fluid all going and I was still not able to start a good fire. So like every good man out there, I was not going to let that defeat me. I looked in the garage and I found my solution, so I thought. The lawnmower gas canister was staring straight at me. So I said, why not? Let's do it. By the way, this is do not try this at home story for the kids. 
So I took that canister and poured and soaked those charcoal bricks and now I was ready for the fire. As you can imagine, as I got the flame close to it, there was a big flame and almost a small explosion and maybe some singed hair, but no real fire to last. What I learned that day is that in order to cook with fire, you need time. You cannot rush it. Uh, you have to take your time, put in the work to build it right, and from time to time to stoke that fire. And then you're really cooking with fire. We all want to cook with fire, but getting there is more than just a skip and a jump. Let's look at Paul and Timothy, his mentee, and see how this looks like. If you are to look at Timothy, Timothy's life and ministry, you can probably see the excitement of his youth in his ministry. He comes from a great, strong family of faith with his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice being the first models for his faith. And then Paul becomes his teacher, his mentor. The apostle took a personal interest in this young man and who was born to a Jewish mother and Gentile father. Paul takes him, uh, takes him under his wing and mentors him, not only in his faith, but Paul prepares him to be a church leader. And if you have to ask if that was an easy task, I will tell you that probably following being Paul's mentee, having him as a mentor was not an easy task. Paul actually has Timothy circumcised as a way to have him without blemish before the Jewish community in a way to establish this young man as a leader and as a bridge between the old and the new. Not only that, but if you follow uh, Paul's journey, you see Timothy uh, going along for some of, of that. So here's my question for you today. Who are you today? Are you Paul or are you Timothy? Are you the one that's preparing the next generation of Christian leadership, of, of faithful believers? Or are you the one praying today, Lord, teach me and prepare me, help me grow in my own ministry? For Paul, the words, I have done my part for such a long time. From now on, I will just coast by, never came to him. Even when he was imprisoned in Rome. On the other side, for Timothy, the words, I had learned plenty. I don't need any more help. I am who I am, and I'm pretty proud of myself as he becomes a church leader, those words are never spoken. So the question really comes down to who we are and where are we in our, in our faith journey? How do we, you and I, keep our focus at any time? How do we keep our focus on God as we travel along the way? How do we flame the fire? How do we stoke the fire that God put in us? Let me first address those that are in Paul's shoes. It starts with identity. You are a follower of Christ and through your life, you have sensed and accepted God's call in your life. You have seen God at work time and time again. And in your life, you experience so much. You have seen lots of good things happening in, in the church, in your ministry, and many more things that maybe made you say, why should I try again? So to you that has been on this path for a long time, 
I want to encourage you on a few things. Number one, to be grateful. Start here. God has been a constant presence in your life. And every day your experience with God becomes not just your foundation, but a story of faithfulness to be shared. I want to, uh, I, I want to speak a little more about the, the idea of being thankful. As we go through life and my, the white hair on my head says that I am starting to get a little old myself. We realize that so many things happen and I hate the cliche. So many things happen for a reason. But in this case, it's true. When God calls us to ministry, we experience so many things in our lives, things that um, at the time seem to be out of our control, out of our um, set of skills, uh, things that we feel that we are stretched. But as we go a year, two years, and we find our uh, ourselves in in a different place of, of, of ministry and life, we look at those times and we say, I am thankful that I had that experience before. <coughs> Excuse me. So I want to encourage you to be thankful and to look at the way how God has been present in your life. And out of this, out of that thankfulness, I want to encourage you to be a testimony to those that are going through those things. Second thing that I want to encourage you is to be praying. I know all of us pray for each other. All of us pray for the things that are going on in the world and, and so forth. But if there is one thing I learn about the people that went before me is that they know how to pray. And not only they know how to pray, they know what to pray for. Especially when a younger person is experiencing distress or something out of ordinary. You have the experience of prayer. You have the experience of life. So I want to encourage you to pray that experience for those that are trying to find themselves in the same shared experience, which is faith in Jesus Christ. I'm sure that along the way in your life, you have experienced um, times when you didn't see a way out of a situation or family was family trouble was so so high that you didn't know how to deal with that. I'm pretty sure that the same situations can apply to many, but you succeeded through that. I want to encourage you to pray for those that are going through that, um, through that experience. Number three, be an encourager. Romans 15, 14 says, I myself am convinced, my brothers and sisters, that you yourself are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. We all need a word of encouragement here and then. The world is filled with so much negativity, and every day seems to be getting harder and harder to stay positive. But you, you can change that. You have been here before. You have seen the church through many ups and downs. You have seen so much turmoil in this world. And you can be the one that becomes an encouragement. And that is, if you look at Paul, that's what he's doing to Timothy here in, in through these letters. He says, I've been in the work of the gospel for so long. I am proud of it. I have experienced a lot of ups and downs, shipwrecks. Now I'm in prison, but I am not ashamed. I know that these things are part of my service to God. And I made it through. 
and so can you. It's important for us that are, let's say, a little more mature in our faith to be an encouragement to those that are much younger. Number four, share your life lessons. One of the blessings of ministry is being able to listen to people's life story. And as I said, Paul is not ashamed to talk about the hard times because in those hard times, there is a faith building opportunity for Timothy. Young believers need to, to hear your lessons. They need to know that what they experience in their life can be overcome because they have an example in, your, in their life through you. So I want to encourage you to share your ups and downs. As a world, we like to talk about the success, about what got us to the top, but the reality is a little different than that, isn't it? In order to get to the top, you have to go through the valleys. And I want to encourage you to share those valleys. Now, let me talk to the Timothy, to the younger person, uh, not just by age, the younger person following or saying, I want to follow Christ. Number one, Remember who you are to God. We all go through moments of doubt and questioning. When you are to compare yourself to your peers or those before you, you can lose focus, focus of who you are. Paul knew about that as being a temptation. So he redirects Timothy to what's important. You have to start here from finding your identity in God. And if you're still questioning what that means, please hear these word, words. You are loved, sought after by God each and every day. Number two, it's a little different than what I said to, to the poll crowd, but it's still similar. Do not be ashamed of who you are where, or where you are at this point in your life. Do not be ashamed of where you are in this journey. Your faith, your walk with Christ will have ups and downs. You will have days when you feel on fire for God and days when you will question everything. Paul knew those moments will come for Timothy and he encourages him to stay focused on God and pursue the holy call God has for him. Don't be ashamed of who you are in faith. It might be shaky, but it is your faith. Number three, rekindle the, the gift that God has for you. Sometimes in churches, you'll hear us speak about spiritual gifts and about discovering what those spiritual gifts are. And some people will be great at serving and welcoming uh, people on Sunday morning. Some will be good at teaching and so on. And sometimes when somebody comes to faith, the question becomes, what can I do for God? And that is the, the, the part where you have to pause and to say, Lord, here I am, use me. This is the part where you look for guidance. This is the part where you connect with someone to mentor you, to teach you about faith, about life, about service. Sometimes the passion that God puts inside of us needs a little help to burn the brightest. I believe that I am in ministry today because there were people in my life that encouraged me to discover the call that God has for me. And I pray that you too will find 
the call that God has for you. Number four, guard the good that God has entrusted you with. Know that as a person of faith, there is still there will still be times where it, where it feels like you are in a spiritual warfare, where the whole world seems to be against you. There are times where you need to dig deep and find the strength that comes from the Word of God, from that sound teaching that says, the Lord is with me. And that teaching will sustain you. Last week, Pastor Roy taught on uh, loving God and loving your neighbor. The church today in many ways uh, has lost those early days understanding of being practical in carrying out that commandment. Do not get me wrong. There are many things we excel at uh, as reaching out and being a presence with those in need. And you know my heart um, and encouragement that as churches we have to look on the outside not inside the church but today i want to challenge you to do exactly the opposite to look inside the church to look to the people that come in on sunday morning and sit with you in the same pew in one way this is about rebuilding the city of god and this starts in this modern understanding of mentorship, of being a mentor and a mentee, of having that relationship of back and forth. As we pray for the church, also let's look for ways to be the church to one another, to encourage those around us to good works, to faith building, to ways to grow in the, in the Lord. This morning I woke up with uh, a little song in my in my heart and in my head. It's something that uh, I have learned in my early faith journey. It's in Romania, I'm not gonna sing, but I'm gonna share the words with you. The words are, we are a family. We are a family of God, united by God and united in God. And that song is not a prayer when it is being sung in churches. It's a statement. It's a call to arms in one way. And that just gave me strength in the day because that is what the church is. And that's my prayer for the church. So I want to leave you with these final thoughts. Who is your Paul? And who is your Timothy? Lord, help us to be your disciples. Amen.